When the red, red robin comes bum, 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 They returned this month. Some of Charlton's yeah, finest sons. Hey, this must be the first time I've ever seen my name in the right. Wake up, wake up, you head, yeah. They may not be quite as light on their feet these days, but their memories are as strong as ever. Yeah, but you remember the bath at you? Oh, yes, yeah. Hey, 36 of us crowding in a bath, three foot by four foot. Yeah. <laughs> a chance to catch up with old friends and remember the part they all played in the club's history. It's a hundred years ago this month Charlton Athletic were formed and in 1920 the club turned professional. During the 30s the legendary Sam Bartram started playing for the club and then for country. But Bartram made a great save and again. But the great thing about him was, as a defender, you'd turn round and say, God, that's a goal, but Sammy would come from nowhere and save it. I loved playing with him because he, he was a, a type that did, did, it, did it all for the club. Charlton fans have been queuing... Although many of the players lost their best years to the war, the first season after peace broke out, Charlton reached the FA Cup final. Here's manager Jimmy Seed, ten days before the game. I think and hope that they will bring the club back to Charlton. Sailor Brown, number eight, was prominent now and throughout the match. It was one all after 90 minutes, but Derby scored three times in extra time. I remember shaking hands with the King. <laughs> Leslie Fell, seven, outside right, John Shreve. Bert Turner, our right half, scored in the, their goal and our goal. Uh, and we in lost in the end. After but the following year, they went one better against Burnley. I can remember the goal all right. I, was, I stood stock still because I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, it was, it was, it was in extra time. And uh, it went... Uh, well, it went in like a rocket. Here's another view of how Duffy did it. I felt sorry for them, in a sense, <laughs> but uh, only a little bit sorry. Don Welsh lifted the trophy, still the finest moments in the club's footballing history. In 1956, Sam Bartram finally left the club, and to this day he still holds the record number of appearances. He turned out 623 times for them. Derek Hales became a cult hero in the 70s, and no one has scored more times for Charlton. To be perfectly honest, where I went from and to, I mean, I, I wouldn't give it up for anything. I mean, I did OK. I went from a local wreck to the top and just hung about there. Former European Player of the Year Alan Simonson arrived in 1982, to the surprise of many, but he only played 17 games before returning to Denmark. 19 years ago, the club was rocked to its core. They were told they would have to leave the valley. Fans were furious, and to add insult to injury, they had to play at the home of their local rivals, Crystal Palace. One of their players at the time was Alan Kirbishley. I, for one, um, didn't have a clue how to get to Sellers Park. Remarkably, in less than a season, Charlton fans were on the pitch again, this time at Selhurst, celebrating promotion. And they stayed up the following year. Two goals in the final seven minutes of extra time helped them beat Leeds in the days when the bottom end of the first division and the top end of the second had a playoff to decide who would be in the top flight. <laughs> Meanwhile, a campaign to get Charlton back to the valley was gathering pace. In a symbolic gesture, Chairman Roger Alwyn invited the fans back to the valley to clean it up. The place where 70,000 used to gather was now in ruin. The sooner we get back here, the better, and I'm sure our results will reflect that. Unfortunately, I think uh, the fans have certainly felt, and I think it's probably got through to the players, that playing at Southhurst Park is playing an away game every other week. But bringing football back to the Valley was going to prove difficult. Frustrated by the council, the fans started a political party to challenge for seats at the local elections in Greenwich. They won over 14,000 votes. The council had to sit up and take notice. Finally, they caved in and agreed Charlton could go back to the valley. 
In the summer of 91, Alan Kirbishley and Steve Grit took over the first team as rebuilding the stadium was in full swing. I mean, really, I couldn't give it, give it to anybody else. There was about 14 players, we were two of them. Uh, we had no ground. By now, they were playing at Upton Park and needed a million pounds to finish the building work at the Valley. The only way they could raise the cash was to sell their best player, Rob Lee. Finally, on December the 5th, 1992, Alwyn led the fans through the gates. The Valley celebrated and the team did the rest. Yeah, I mean, it's marvellous. Perfect ending to a perfect day. We were playing Portsmouth, Jimmy Smith was in charge and they had no chance that day. They was never going to win it. It was our day and we won it 1-0 and it was the start. It was the start of everything we've got now. And who will ever forget the day Charlton got back to the top flight? Mendonca's hat-trick. Four all at the end of extra time. And it all came down to this. Alan Kirbishley not looking, but hoping nonetheless that Michael Gray misses. And he has missed! Illich has saved it! Charlton are in the Premiership! Magic memories there, but um, I always felt on the day that we couldn't afford to lose it. This massively kick-started us and put us into uh, a different level. And uh, the job then was, was trying to maintain that. Although they went down the following season, they bounced straight back as champions in 2000. And they've never looked back. Kirbishley has established them in the Premiership. And last season's seventh place finish was an incredible achievement. I think last year uh, was a fantastic achievement for us. I mean, I don't know if that's as good as it gets. I don't know. The players we bring in now, I'm looking at, I don't talk to them about Paul cabins. I don't talk to them about selling players to pay for the stadium. We talk about what can we do next year and what can we do, the, you know, the, the future, because I think we're past that. Although people in this building connected with the club will never forget it, and I don't think we can. I think we've always got to remember that. But I think now, next couple of seasons, we've got to start thinking, where can we get to? While the boss thinks ahead, last weekend was a chance to look back on the history of Charlton Athletic. You're, you're, you're looking at that picture. From over there, you're looking used to at be. That, that, that terrace over there. When the red, red robin.